I'm Insomniac and this is the Big Bold Jelly from Swatch. All right, so today we're looking at something new from Swatch. This is the Big Bold Jelly, which uh, comes in a bunch of interesting colors and flavors and varieties, as it were. Came out fairly recently as of the time of this review. Before I get into it, if anybody watching this has any watches you'd like to see reviewed on this channel, you can send them in. They'll be reviewed and short and sent back. Just email me at shoulditimethis at gmail.com. I will let you know where to send the watches in. And yes, that's about it. So let's get into the review. The case on this watch can be mostly summed up in one word, plastic. The main body of the case, the lugs, the fixed bezel area, the crown, the crystal, they're all plastic. The only one of those pieces that isn't confirmed is the crystal. Swatch doesn't tell you what that's made out of, but when you tap on it, it sounds like plastic to me. In terms of shape, it's a pie pan shape with the sides tapering up slightly towards the top of the watch. The crown is mounted at the two o'clock position, which looks kind of strange, but actually aids in adding comfort on the wrist, being that it's a large diameter watch. With the crown at two o'clock, it really doesn't dig into your wrist. From the side, you can see that the fixed lugs are molded downward at a fairly steep angle, but I find that this is more of a visual oddity than anything else, because functionally, it seems to position a strap at just the right angle, so the back of the case does sit perfectly flush on my wrist. Case back is sealed like a lot of Swatch watches, but you do have an easy access compartment for battery changes when necessary. The choice to use literal plastic for the case has its pluses and minuses. The obvious large negative is that it looks and feels cheap, it gives you the impression of a toy or some kind of piece you'd buy at Walgreens for a 10 year old, but interestingly enough it has a lot more pluses than minuses if you can get past the toy like look and feel. First of all, the case is super lightweight, so between all of the plastic parts and the small quartz movement, it feels almost weightless on the wrist. Second, it's cosmetically more durable than most other watches. What I mean is that a steel case would probably hold up better to extreme impact, but plastic is harder to scratch by just tapping it on something. Add that to the fact that the plastic used here is this frosted semi-transparent color, and it would be pretty hard to see any cosmetic imperfections here. Last, you have the feel of the plastic used for the case. It has been really hot and humid every day since this watch came in, and for some reason I thought the plastic case would feel kind of sticky or tacky on the wrist, but interestingly enough it's very smooth and comfortable, even in hot conditions. The long story short here is that it looks cheap, but it's light, comfortable, and cosmetically durable. The dial on this watch is barely a dial. Outside of the indices, hands, and printing, there's nothing to talk about. It's a completely clear surface which allows you to see through to the movement and all the way down to your wrist. The whole thing is a mix of great and terrible. The great is obviously the size, shape, and contrast of the indices and hands. Your hour indices are large rectangles, while the minute indices are simple lines at the outer edge of the dial, and all that is set against a clear backdrop, so they're very bold and the Swatch brand logo and the word Swiss are printed on the dial in white, which actually contrasts well with the black parts of the movement below it. Outside of that, dial goes downhill. The minute track looks like a standard printed minute track, clean and simple, so no complaints there. But look closely at the hour indices and they don't appear to be printed, they're applied. But they appear to be black rectangular stickers, which furthers the cheap looking trend here. Then you have the hands, which to me are the biggest disappointment of the dial. The second hand gets a pass for the most part, being basically a standard stick style hand with a generic looking counterbalance. But the hour and minute hands are pretty ridiculous. Cosmetically, they're a juvenile kind of fun match to the hour indices, which at a glance looks good as a whole. But look at those two hands more closely and you'll see that there was no attempt at all to make them any kind of shape or give them any depth or character. They're literally two completely flat black rectangles. That's it. Besides having no shape or interesting features to speak of, the broad flat edges of those hands don't necessarily point at anything, so despite the dial being so simple, it takes longer than it should to figure out which minute index the hand is actually pointing to. Last we have the transparency situation. I don't mind a transparent dial, especially if the contrast and legibility of the hands and indices is good like it is here, but in this case it looks through to a small quartz movement. 
Unlike with a mechanical movement, where at least you have the watch, balance wheel, and escapement in action, there's literally nothing to look at here. So rather than having a cool industrial mechanical feel, it just looks like Swatch forgot to paint the dial. So overall, at a glance, it looks kind of fun and playful, but it's really not a fantastic dial. Usually accuracy with a quartz watch is simple. Quartz is usually more reliable than mechanical movements, and so the scoring here is usually pretty easy. But you have a few interesting anomalies with this movement. First of all, and most importantly, I've only owned it for about three days, but so far it's already over a minute fast compared to where I set it. Being that it's a quartz movement, I can't put it on my scope to actually see what the deviation in seconds per day is, but it's definitely running a bit fast. Second, and possibly my most common complaint when reviewing quartz watches, is the fact that the deadbeat second hand doesn't land on about half of the indices at the outer edge of the dial. Although, oddly enough, it seems to land dead on on all of them on the left side of the dial, but once you get past the 12, it lands near or in between just about all of the indices on the right side of the dial. The last thing to point out is something that comes down to personal preference and doesn't actually affect the accuracy, uh, but it's something that I thought I should point out. This watch is loud. I'm actually going to stop talking for a second and see if you could hear it on camera. Now I'm not sure if the mic here could uh, pick that up well, but if you're in a quiet room you can actually hear the second hand regardless of where your hand is, even if it's down by your side. Now personally I like the sound of a watch movement regardless of whether it's mechanical or quartz, so for me I thought it added a bit of charm. But if you don't like hearing a constant tick, this watch might actually drive you crazy. It's actually pretty interesting. The strap on this watch is really wide, and not unlike the case, it looks cheap and moderately juvenile. It's semi-transparent like the case, so it does match perfectly and has a fairly neutral look to it. The clasp is made of aluminum and has the swatch name nicely engraved into it, and it's black coated which matches the black accents on the dial nicely. The strap material is silicone and it has a good thickness to it, but at the same time it's nice and light just like the case which creates good balance overall. Despite looking cheap, I actually really like this strap. I found it to be very comfortable throughout the day and it actually has a nice cool feel to it out in the heat, so functionally it's a perfect strap for this watch. Last we have value. As of the time of this review, this is a new piece from Swatch. It is on their site for $110. $110 really isn't a lot of money for a watch, we all know that, but we're talking about a plastic quartz watch. Swatch is a Swiss brand and a big name in the industry, but really when you look closely at what you're getting here, it looks like you're paying mostly for the name. In fact, Swatch actually makes some really nice cheap mechanical watches for around the same price. Add to that the fact that I'm not old by any means, but I felt like I was wearing a teenager's fashion accessory the whole time I had this piece, and I honestly believe that unless you're in that young demographic and you're looking for something that's more stylistically posed rather than a good watch for the money, this watch really doesn't offer much for the price considering the fact that, again, subtracting the Swatch brand name, you could buy quartz plastic watches for $10 and up. So it's a fun, playful piece by a very respected brand, but in my opinion, $110 for this is pretty steep. Well, definitely an interesting piece, I can say that for sure. I appreciate you tuning in to take a look at the review. If you have one of these, definitely leave a comment down below. Let everybody know what you think of this watch. If you agree, disagree, what things you do and don't like about it, etc. And yeah, that's about it. I will see you all at the next review.